All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to be um, talking about uh, about Form 22 and, and then just broadly about about Gateway and some of the technology initiatives that um, that DLGF uh, has on the table right now. Um, I appreciate everyone that was here on on Tuesday. Um, Courtney and I spoke about tax bills and circuit breakers and, and LOITs and received a lot of great questions then. Um, so I, I welcome more questions today. Uh, I, I know that particularly when we talk about um, new ways of submitting data, um, new applications we're bringing online, th those are things that are going to impact you um, very directly. So um, questions you have, feedback, suggestions, uh, we love those kind of things. It's, it's very welcome. So I'm going to, to briefly, uh, briefly discuss Gateway just, just conceptually. Um, I think probably everyone in the room has been there or, or, or is familiar with it, but, but I know we always have, um, have new folks. Uh, so, so Gateway is a tool that, um, that it, it is a partner project between DLGF, the State Board of Accounts. Uh, there are a couple other agencies with smaller tools on it. We have um, education and employment relations. Uh, we've got Gaming Commission that, that does a little bit. Uh, and, and then we work together with, uh, with a partner team from, from Indiana University. Uh, so, so at this point, we're collecting, as you all know, an awful lot of our, of our data uh, through Gateway. So Gateway, uh, it broadly serves two purposes. Uh, it's, it's used for, for public transparency, um, but it's also used as a data collection tool, and those, those two things go hand in hand. Um, one of the really handy things about having an, an online resource like Gateway is uh, when you all, or, or when the townships, or libraries, or schools uh, submit data, we can instantly turn it right back around and, and make it available to the public. So um, from a transparency perspective, having a tool like Gateway I think is a great thing. Uh, we do use it for, for data collection, and every time we turn around we've got one more thing that Somebody's telling us that we need to collect through Gateway. And so uh, we have just a, a subset of, of the things that we collect listed up on the board. We've got um, budgets, which, which you all are doing or, or have been doing recently, um, assessed values from the county auditor's perspective. Uh, we do debt reporting, TIF reporting, uh, a few smaller functions, including some other post-employment benefits. Um, so more or less, at any given point in the year, there's some Gateway report that's outstanding. Um, I'm going to I'm going to navigate to, to Gateway and and take a look at the the public side or demonstrate the public side of it. Uh, so, so I know that that many of you um, have seen or or have been to Gateway in particular. You've been uh, at, at the local officials portion of it, where you're actually submitting data to us. But but we also have a piece of it that's used by. Uh, by taxpayers, by, by academic researchers, um, businesses, other governments interested in researching what other governments are doing. Uh, and so that's the report builder section. Um, we're actually, we, we're, we're going through uh, a redesign of, of a report builder right now. Um, it's gonna be occurring over the next year or so, but it's sort of in different, um, in different phases. We're, we're gonna work on making it easier to search for, for taxpayers in particular, easier for them to find the units they're interested in researching. Uh, we're, we're looking at ways to make it less modular, so, so a taxpayer may not necessarily know that what they want to look for um, is in budget or is in the AFR. Instead, they just want to know what their unit of government is, is doing, just broadly. Um, so we're working on tools to make it more accessible that way. Uh, but, it, but if you're just a, a taxpayer from anywhere in Indiana and you want to research uh, what your local governments are doing, we have this public site available. Um, so if I navigate to, to the budgets, um, piece of it. What you'll find here is, is a version of what you submit online through the budget's application um, accessible for, for those in the community to see. So we can go to line item budget estimates, that's the form one. Um, we can look at it for, for any given year. So we'll do last year for, sorry if, sorry if I'm going to pick on somebody in the room. What, anybody we want. So Davies County, county unit, And we can look at their funds and find out what the, the line item expenditures or what the line item estimates are going to be for that given year. So one of the things that, that I'm personally um, really excited about with, with some of the gateway updates that we're talking about for the public side in particular is what we just did right there going um, somewhat tediously 
through a list of drop-down boxes, I, I'm, I'm hoping to get to a point where there's a lot less of that involved. You can see more than one fund at a time. You can see more than one unit at a time, or you can compare across different counties. I, I think it's going to be great for, for transparency. Um, but what you see here on, on the public side is just a version of what you submitted uh, within the application itself. And so in addition to budgets, uh, we've got uh, debt data, and we've got, uh, we, you know, we have property tax summaries, AFR, um, employee compensation, lots of great information up here. So if you have taxpayers in your counties that want to know what your county doing, how do you compare to another county, this, this is a great resource that um, I hope from time to time you find opportunity to point them to. But, uh, so as, as it relates to everyone in the room, uh, beyond public transparency, we do use the tool for data collection. So, so everything you all have been doing recently um, in terms of submitting data through DCAF or submitting data through the budget application is data that we're going to collect and store in databases and be able to analyze, um, turn back around for those who request it. So one of the items uh, that was new for, for 2015, for the 2016 pay year, uh, was the, the collection of CNAV through a new application. So, so for those of you who have been around for more than one year, uh, NAVs were previously submitted through a component of the budget application. We've pulled it out and placed it into a, a new tool that we call DCAF, which is data entry for CNAV and Form 22. So we're going to spend a, a good portion of today talking about the Form 22 side of it. Uh, but, but the CNAV piece of it was, was new for this year. Um, and so we're most of the way through it. I didn't check numbers before I came here, but, but most counties are in at this point. Uh, we know there are things that, that we need to look at, as there would be with any given application after one year. Um, so, so we have things we're going to look to improve on, on year two. And if you have feedback on how it went, we'd definitely love to hear it. Um, but, but all things considered, at least in terms of the technology itself, it went pretty smoothly. Um, and one of, the, one of the best pieces of it compared to the old CNAV tool is the upload feature. So you could export the AVs from your tax and billing system and upload them and not have to key them in manually as folks used to have to do. Uh, we're going to incorporate pieces of that into the Form 22 side. Uh, Form 22, there, there's, there's something major that's different about it, and that's it's the first time we're going to be collecting Form 22 data through Gateway. So, so CNAV, at least we had that precedent, even if it was in a new tool. I'm excited about Form 22, uh, but we also recognize it's going to be something new for a lot of folks. So uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, just kind of broadly about what Form 22s are, and then I'll take you through a demonstration of how the tool works or how it looks at least right now. Um, we've also been working with the tax and billing vendors over um, the last few weeks and the last couple months. Um, so they could be prepared for it. Um, we're we're kind of going through our last few stages of testing right now. It's really an exciting time for us in terms of the application. Uh, but the Form 22s, as, as you all know, are used to document distributions to, to units of government within the county. Uh, we, we think of it in terms of June and December distributions. Um, there are four different distribution types, or at least four different distribution types that we track through the Form 22. So that's the, the general property tax, license excise, CVET and the financial institution tax. Um, it's used by the budget field reps uh, during their budget reviews. It's, it's one of the components that feeds into the field budget program. The field budget is a tool that, that the budget field representatives that you work with throughout um, the summer into the fall, that's what they're going to use to actually review your budget. Um, it's currently submitted um, a couple different ways. We, we have some counties um, that physically mail it in. We have some counties that send us an Excel file. We have some counties that send us a PDF file. It, it's, it's kind of all over the board. And then we take that data and um, we key it into uh, a database known as Logadaba, which stands for Local Government Database. Uh, so, so to give kind of a sense of the scope of that project, um, we're, we're trying to, to keep track of, of files from 92 different counties. And all things considered for the total number of distributions that, that we end up entering into the database in the current state, it's, it's something like 27,000 records um, twice a year. So, so as you can imagine, it's, um, uh, in terms of, of man hours, it's a really big undertaking to get into the database. It's also um, it's prone to error. That's, that's going to happen when you're typing 
27,000 numbers uh, and when you're trying to make sure you have it lined up to the correct fund. So a big part of what we're trying to accomplish is um, getting a, a system in place that's more time efficient and more accurate. And I, I think that when we, when we talk about being able to upload records, being able to look at them visually and submit them electronically, that's our avenue toward better, more accurate data. So during uh, the, the recent round of software compliance testing, so, so James Johnson from, from the department went and visited um, each of the counties, and, and that was phase three of software compliance testing. Uh, but it, it's a three-wave uh, testing cycle. So during phase one, the tax and billing system, system vendors um, demonstrated the ability to do all kinds of things, uh, uh, tax bills, abstracts. Um, but one of the things they also demonstrated was the ability to generate Form 22 extract files. Um, and they all passed testing, and, and, and they all did um, just fine. So since the, since the period where we tested for phase one compliance testing, we identified there were a few things um, that were f faulty or, or at least less than ideal in the ways that we had originally designed the file specifications. So we've been working with the tax and billing vendors uh, over the last couple months to, to update uh, the ways that these files are going to be exported from the tax and billing systems in your offices. The, if, if you want to think about it visually, we're moving to a system that has uh, more rows and, and fewer columns, uh, which is more consistent with how you're going to see it stored um, in most, most databases. It's, it's, it's better to store it in what we kind of call a normalized format um, as opposed to, to, to going really wide and trying to capture each type of distribution on the same row. The, the file specs, and I've actually seen, we, we've had a, a question about file specs already. Um, I'm going to navigate to DLGF's website. So if, if you haven't been here before, this is uh, Department of Local Government Finance's website. It's just in.gov slash DLGF. ton of great information out here. Uh, one, one thing that we have is, is a gateway section, and, and we have actually a separate page, data entry for CNAV and Form 22. Um, so one thing we have up here is, this is a user guide for how to use the CNAV side of gateway. Um, we're working on our user guide now for the Form 22 side, what I'm gonna demonstrate to you. So uh, before we have it in your hands, ready for you to use, we're gonna have a comprehensive user guide available to help walk you through the process. Uh, but we also here have, uh, have the, the file formats. So these are the formats, this, this one I'm hovering over now, for, for the CNAV files that most of you uploaded this year. And then these are the formats for the Form 22 side. Uh, so the tax and billing system vendors are going to be able to export text files in the format specified uh, here to, so that it can be uploaded in the gateway and submitted. So if, if, you, if you're interested, if, if, if you've got a technical mind or, or just kind of want to get a sense for what the vendors are working on, you're welcome to go to that page and take a look at it. If you were to compare it to the old file specifications, uh, the really key difference that you're going to see is, uh, so here where we have distribution code, and we've, we've got the different kinds of codes um, available over here on the right side, we, we previously had a separate slot for general property, for license excise, for CVET, um, and for FIT. So when we say we've normalized it, what that means is we're going to have you indicate on any given row what type of distribution it is and the amount for that particular distribution. In any case, for, for most of us, this is more than we need to know from the technical side of it. The tax and billing system vendors are gonna be able to export it in text files that match this format. So timeline, uh, the, the timeline is, is tough for us. Um, I actually talked about this a little bit at the spring conference and asked you not to throw tomatoes at me if, if we didn't, work, didn't have it done. So I, I also still ask you, please don't throw tomatoes at me if you can avoid it. We, we, we want it to be up and ready for um, December distribution. So the, the, vision that we have, uh, the vision that we have right now is that we're going to start collecting data for Form 22s through Gateway to correspond with this December distributions. But, but for one, um, for one cycle, we're going to ask folks to submit both um, the, the older ways, so, so using the CSVs um, as, you, as you've traditionally done, and submitting the data to us through Gateway. We're also planning on doing um, two of the four distribution types, so general property and license excise. 
FIT and CVET, we're gonna continue to collect for now, um, offline, and, and enter that manually. Um, Long-term vision is, is at some point to, to get that into the export file. I don't know exactly what that would look like right now, so I, I, it'd be way out of line for me to commit to, to anything in particular, but, but one way or another, what we'd like to do is be able to get FIT and CVET data into the tax and billing systems, it, perhaps just the data itself, so that it could be uploaded through Form 22. If, if you happen to want to, there's not gonna be anything that's gonna stop you from uploading data to Gateway for those two distributions. Um, that would be great, but, but we know that's not, at the moment, how the systems are configured. So Form 22 is going to sit within uh, the, the overall decaf wrapper. Uh, you all have been in there working with CNAVs. Uh, when you clicked on, on Manage CNAV on the bottom part of, of that page, the top part is where you would enter Form 22 data. It's, it's actually not live at the moment. Uh, we're, we're working on it on, on a dev site, um, putting it through testing, making sure that we've got it squared away, um, but we'll get it rolled out later on this fall. So with that said, I'm gonna show you uh, how the tool looks right now, give you a general idea of, of how it's going to work. Um, I, I do wanna make sure that, that I, I point out, and I've got this on the screen, um, it's, it's somewhat, uh, it's tough showing uh, a tool that's, that's in development because uh, we know that it may have features right now that it's not ultimately gonna have. It may be missing features right now that eventually in time it will have. Uh, I don't dispute the fact that I could pull something up right now and it could, we could reach a server error. There are all kinds of things that, that could happen, um, but, but in general, the tool is there. Um, so I'm really excited to show it to you and show you what we've got. So, I'm going to um, navigate to, to a dev site that we have. So this is not a site that anyone in the room would necessarily have access to, and it's, it's, it's not quite the same as Gateway. It's, it's a little bit out of date, but, but the decaf portion of it is updated. So I'm clicking on data entry for CNAV and Form 22. It's the same tool that you've been using for CNAV. Uh, I've got my list of, of units that I have access to. It's gonna be just the counties that use this tool. We were, we were just um, working with the other units to, to see how it would go. Uh, so I've got access to, to my six counties. In your case, you'd have access almost certainly just to the one. So I'm gonna work with, uh, with Warren County just for demonstration purposes. So already, um, so far this fall, almost every county has gone in and used managed CNAV, and you've uploaded your files. Uh, and you've gotten your data to us, and, and that was the final CNAP submission. The other component to this is Form 22. So up here, if we go to Manage Units and Distributions, that's gonna lead us to the Form 22 side. And what you'll see when you get into, uh, into the Manage Units and Distributions uh, section is you'll, you'll see a list of the taxing units within the county, and then if there have been any data entered in, it's gonna be listed here. Um, I, I happen to have just a little bit of data entered in for Steuben Township um, here in Warren County, uh, but it, it could be any one. Uh, you can click on any given um, dollar amount that's been listed. You can you get kind of a summary of, of what's been submitted so far. And that's all fine, but, but the big thing is the actual submission of the data itself. So we, we took a look at, uh, we, we took a look at what the file specs looked like. So this, this is what the actual file itself is. You won't be making this by hand by any stretch, but, but this is what the file itself looks like. Um, we've got data indicating, uh, we've got data indicating um, which file it is that we're uploading. Um, this one's kind of goofy. I've got a few different random things in here. Um, but we've got the year, we've got the distribution type, we've got a date. Um, so when you, when you export these files from your tax and billing system, you're gonna be able to upload them, uh, upload them into Gateway. So the one that we're gonna to upload today is gonna to be this one. It's, it's been slimmed down. Um, in reality, you're likely gonna be uploading it for every unit and every distribution all at one time, though how you choose to do it will be up to you. Um, so I'm gonna upload data that all corresponds to the county unit in Warren County using this text file. So I'm navigating back to Gateway now. And the way you would do that is click on, um, we have an upload button up in the top right corner. It's gonna function really similarly to what the CNAV upload did. Uh, you, can, you can identify where you're going to choose your file from, so you have this stored somewhere on your PC. 
Um, for us, we have it on our desktop. Uh, so I'm choosing the Warren County Form 22 file. After we choose our file, we're going to click the Process button. And then after clicking Process, um, this is a tool that's really handy. It's going to visually display for you the records that you're getting ready to enter into Gateway. Um, so we're able to see here the exact same records that we just looked at a moment ago in the text file, organized into a format that's just a little bit more, um, a little bit easier to read. It's telling you um, uh, entity type in F means it's going to be for a given fund. We've got fund codes, distribution type, distribution date, and what the amount's going to be. Once we're satisfied, this is the amount that we intend to enter. We can insert the valid data. And if we go back to our Managed Units and Distributions page, just a moment ago we had $0 in distributions. We now, for the county unit in Warren County, have $1.249 million. So chances are, if, if you're doing this all at one time with all your units and all their funds and all the distributions, what you're going to end up seeing is um, all the data uploaded at one time uh, for, for any given period. So now, like we did before with the previous distribution, we can click on um, this 1.24 million and take a look at um, the different funds that we're saying distributions have gone to. If you go back to the, the county unit itself, we give you the ability uh, to take a look at the, the funds that have been uploaded. And if you find out, oops, I uploaded, you know, $3,502, but I actually meant $35,000. Uh, you'd be able to update that amount there. So let's say you want to do $35,000 and $2. And it updates there for you in real time. And then if you wanted to, uh, you'd be a glutton for punishment, but if, if you wanted to, you can actually enter in all these distributions by hand as well. So, so I'll demonstrate for you how we do that. Um, let's say that we're doing a distribution to the county unit by hand, a given fund, we'll do a rainy day fund or general, and I'm just going to type in FIT just for example purposes. Distribution was on December 9th, and it was in the amount of $900. And if we scroll down to the bottom of our list, bottom of our list ordered by fund, we'll see the $900 listed there. Anyhow, I, I know this is all a brand new thing, uh, but this is just a new way of looking at the Form 22 data that so far has been submitted to us through those CSVs or through those files that are printed out. The nice thing about it is you're going to have a chance to review it before submitting it, and then once it's submitted, we can always go back and look at it again. It's an easy way to look for inaccuracies. We can stop with, with um, all the back and forth we have between county auditors and between DLGF, trying to track down CSVs for given units or given funds. If we find out that something's missing, it's, it's very easy to update it here electronically. So that's the quick tour of it. After entering in distributions for all the units, we're going to have a, a process by which you can mark it ready to submit, very similar to what you do with budget forms, um, and then actually submit the data to us. We have two different um, time periods for this. So there are June distributions and there are December distributions. Um, and then one of the other questions we've received that we're working on right now, we, we received a question about reports around Form 22 data, um, which is a great question. Uh, I don't have the, the answer for that one right offhand. We, we are going to produce reports for it. Um, one thing I'd be interested in, if, feel free to email me, however you'd like to reach me. If, if in your county you're already collecting or, or you're already producing Form 22 reports, particularly if they're in a format besides the CSV, but even if they are in that, in that CSV file format and that's something that's useful to you, um, let me know that because as we're working to formulate what these reports are going to look like, we always welcome your feedback. So that's a tour of Form 22. Um, we're, we're going through our final testing and we're working on, with the vendors now on the files themselves that are going to be uploaded. So we should have more guidance out to you um, within the next handful of weeks or month or so. So beyond Form 22, uh, I do have a handful of other things that I'd like to just kind of quickly talk to you about and share with you. Uh, one of those items is, is budget notices. I, I think at this point most people in the room have seen... We have a question? Okay. Sorry. So if we start using the Form 22s, um, on Gateway 
for December settlement, what about any advanced trials we've already processed? Would we enter those manually? So that's a great question. The, the, the question was about um, advances for, for December distributions. Um, you're able to upload advances in the same way that you can final distributions. Um, so our preference would be when, it, when they're uploaded to also upload the records for the advances at the same time. So that way we have kind of the full set of data. It's a good question. I, my, my assumption, and maybe I'm assuming wrong, my, my assumption is that the software vendors are already going to have records of those advances in their systems. Maybe I'm incorrect on that, and if I am, we'll need to go back and revisit it. But I think they'll already have records of that, and if so, they should be able to export it along with the other uh, final distributions. Are there other questions about Form 22 before we move on? Okay, uh, so, so budget notices is, is a tool that's, that's still relatively new to us. It's, it's been up for uh, two budget cycles. Uh, so when, when units of government, and it's everyone, counties and all the units within the county, submit their Form 3, at the same time they submit it, a notice goes onto the site on the budget notices.in.gov that displays information about public hearing dates, adoptions, uh, proposed budgets, uh, things along those lines. Uh, it, it's a tool that's that's there for for, um, for for users at any given point. They can they can take a look at it day or night. I'm going to use it in Chrome. It, it tends to work a little better in Chrome than it does in Explorer. So this is budget notices. Just for anybody that hasn't had a chance to check it out, um, with this tool you can type in um, you can type in your address and it'll pull up the taxing units. Um, for the address that you've typed in, so, so I'll type in uh, the government center address. We're using a, a Google API to, to pull this data back, um, tied together with, with some historical data about um, where units and taxing districts um, intersect. And so if you type in your address, it's going to pull it up on a map, and then down below it's going to display uh, a budget notice for uh, for that unit of government. So if we want to look at Center Township, we could click on the link for the Center Township budget notice. It's going to pull it up for us. So if there was a taxpayer that was interested in, in this information, um, they, they could look and see when the public hearing is going to be, when the adoption meeting is going to be, um, the amount that their units of government are proposing to appropriate for the upcoming year, um, the amounts for the tax levies. Um, we find that, that some of the folks who are most interested in it are those who want to compare um, what their unit of government is proposing relative to what another unit is. So, so I, I live in Center Township in, in Marion County, but if I wanted to compare Center Township to Washington Township or the Warren Township, um, it's very easy for me to do. One of the other nice features that we rolled out for, for 2016, so, so for the 2016 budget year, I should say, is an email subscription feature. So we have, um, we have a lot of users who have entered their email address. Uh, and when you, when you click on save with your email address, it then gives you the option to indicate the taxing units that you're interested in. And when that taxing unit submits its form three and its budget notice goes on the budgetnotices.in.gov, it then becomes available for that taxpayer to view. Um, they receive an email letting them know, hey, you know, Washington County has submitted its form three. Uh, it's now available for you to view online. The emails give you a list of all the units that you're subscribed to and what their status is. So if your township unit happens to submit its Form 3 first, you can see that. And if, if your school or, or whoever happens to submit it last, by the time you receive each of those emails, you'll be able to see the status for each unit you subscribe to. And then in the same way, when you come to the site, if you type your address in, you can easily see um, the units that you're interested in. Or if you wanted to look at it, uh, say county by county, so let's say that we were interested in Bartholomew County because we're here today. We we're interested in all the Bartholomew County units. You can select Bartholomew County from the drop-down list. You can see when their budget notices have been submitted, some sort of summary information about um, what it is they're proposing. Um, and you can take a look at the, at the Form 3 itself um, to see you know, all the relevant information. So it's, it's a tool that, that we hope folks are taking care of. 
um, of using. We're, we're, we're keeping track of it, at least as well as we can, in terms of questions that we get. We're trying to do some tracking on, on how many people are accessing the site, people that have signed up through email. Uh, but, but if your taxpayers are interested in finding out more about the proposed budgets for their local government, um, this is a great tool to point them to. You can also find budget notices if, if you go to Gateway. Uh, on the piece of it before you've logged in, um, we, ha we have a lot of tools here, and one of them is when is your budget hearing, which takes you to budgetnotices.in.gov. So I, I have a couple other smaller items. Um, this one is, is actually not one that I'm the expert on, but I'm, I'm going to do my best. There, there's um, an annual abatement advertisement that has to go into the newspaper. It's actually been on, on, on the books. This advertisement's been required for, for years, a, a decade or so. Uh, and so we're, we're collecting this data through Gateway. We, we collected it for the first time um, last year. We're collecting it this year again through Gateway. You can look for guidance from the department um, sometime in the next few weeks, but, but the deadline for it is by the end of this calendar year to have that advertisement in the newspapers and then to have it submitted um, online through Gateway. So you're going to submit it through, um, through the budget application, the same place that you submit your form for. Uh, so I'll quickly show you how to do that. So as a quick aside, uh, this time of year is, uh, I think, our most interesting um, in, term, in terms of gateway support, because um, with, with budget, we get um, dozens of calls a day. I mean, dozens. I've, I've probably talked to half of you in the room, and I know that, that a couple of my colleagues have as well, and, and that's great. We're happy to do it. So I'm going to show you my list of taxing units. Uh, it's daunting. I've got access to this many units. <laughs> it's probably a little bit longer than, than what most of you see. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll pick a county unit that, that I know I have, uh, Putnam County. So you're going to submit your, your abatement um, advertisement, the same place that you submit your form for, um, so it's the budget form, budget, uh, budget form menu. On the submit, sign form for and other documents, we have an option here for um, annual economic revitalization area abatement information. It's typically a PDF upload. Um, last year we got it from virtually every county, so I, I know it's a process that's familiar to you. Um, and then once you upload it, this also goes onto Gateway's public site. Um, it's available under the budget section. We have, we have an abatements slash um, ERA public tool. So county assessors, um, this is, uh, I, I wanted to bring this message to the county auditors conference because um, I know many of you work um, very closely with the, with the assessors in your county. We are going to be bringing the county assessors in the gateway for the first time um, here over uh, the next couple months. And, and we're going to be doing a variety of, of, of things with the assessors, but, but the one that's the driver is um, there's a, a PETA BOA report that's due before April 1st, it's the Property Tax Assessment Board of Appeals. Um, they've got a, a new annual report that has to go through Gateway. Uh, so we're, we're working on launching that for beginning of the year. Um, and I'm going to be doing some training with the county assessors at their conference in January. Uh, it, it's exciting. It's, we, we also know it's a, it's a brand new group of users, but it's exciting to get them online. Um, and then we're going to work on doing, doing some other things, too. I'd, I'd like to get back to the point where we're receiving uh, data files through Gateway. So when I say data files, from, from the assessor's perspective, I'm referring to their data about parcels, uh, about personal property, things like that. For, for, um, for auditors, at, at some point, I'd like to get back to the point where we're receiving um, tax data and adjustments through gateway as opposed to email. We're, we're not there yet, but, but that's one of my visions. And we're going to work on building out a tool to collect those, those pieces. Um, but so anyhow, if, if you hear any, um, any questions from the assessor in your county about Gateway, it is true, we're, we're taking them there. Um, we're also working on making it as, as seamless as we can. We're, we're going to upload um, county assessor um, information all at once, so we have um, their contact information and their Gateway accounts all set up. Um, in the same way, we're working on guidance for the Form 22 application. We're working on guidance for the application that the assessors are going to use. And then in time, as we get those file uploads built out, we'll be sending out more documentation there. 
And one of my last items that I wanted to note was, was software certification. So um, this is my third auditor's conference speaking at, and, and at both of the last two I've spoken in, in more depth about software certification. So um, I'm very excited to report now that, that we are essentially complete with software certification um, for the cycle that, that ended um, on June 30th, 2015. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we, we sent James out to, to every county, so he's the most well-traveled man at the department at this point. Um, he had a lot of great things to say about the auditors, so I, I did want to make sure that, that I took an opportunity to thank you all. Um, I, know it's, I, know it's, uh, I know it's tough, and I know at times it can feel somewhat invasive and, and it's intrusive um, on your time, but it is something that we're required to do. Um, and, and I can say very honestly um, and, and unequivocally that um, all your support and all that you did to accommodate James, to accommodate the testing, it made it run as smoothly as we could have possibly hoped. So thank you all very sincerely uh, for all you did for software certification this year. With that said, the next wave is going to be coming up uh, in five years. So, so it's a five-year cycle called for in the administrative code. So what we've just done, due by June 30th, 2015, we're going to be doing the same thing June 30th, 2020. Um, it'll likely still be the same three phases, so, so probably kicking off in, um, with, more, um, with more detail sometime around 2018 or so, so, so a couple years from now. Um, but we'll be get, getting the ball rolling again. So with that said, I know I'm wrapping up a little bit early. Um, my contact information is, is up on the board. Um, I know that I've already received a few questions written, and, and that's great. I, I encourage you to write questions that they'll get to our office. Um, but since we have time, I'm also happy to take questions now if anybody wants to talk about Gateway or, or the things we talked about so far today. We have a question up front, Lori. Yeah. 